continue what happens after we have done surgery for lymphedema and uh, looking into measurements and uh, quality control. So mentioned earlier how we can classify when you're doing liposuction, you have the pitting, so the problem is accumulated lymph and no pitting, you have the excess adipose tissue. So you do the conservative treatment and if the arm and leg is still um, large, you can continue with liposuction. So of course we take pictures of all patients before and after. We do the pitting test, do the stem assign, which we have spoken about earlier. Scintigraphy we only do in primary lymphedema and uh, volume measurements. And uh, we use what we call control compression therapy. I'll talk about that later. So pictures before and after is important. Pitting test, you really have to press as hard as possible with your thumb on the extremity. At least one minute on the arm, and sometimes in legs you need to do it for uh, three minutes because some of them have a very uh, accumulated fluid that makes them very hard. And you might think it's fibrous tissue, but most of the time it's just fluid that you can compress. So this patient is not a candidate for liposuction, but this patient is, is a good candidate. Stemosine we talked about, to the left you see a positive stemosine, and on the right a negative one. We do lymphocentigraphy here, you can see in the right picture, uh, the, the dermal backflow here, and you also have uptake here in the liver. And we use these volume measurements. We always use, uh, measure both arms or both legs at the same time, because if you only use the normal extremity during the follow-up, it's not correct because of no, uh, the volume of the normal extremity varies during the time of the day, smaller in the morning and larger in the afternoon. And we also use uh, volume measurements for, uh, for legs with this platysmographic method. But you can also measure it with, uh, uh, either with a Kunke uh, cylinder model or the frustrum. Uh, so here you can calculate the volume, but this is more accurate, the volume of the truncated cone. And uh, we have made a, a very simple computer program in Excel that can be downloaded from uh, our homepage. So you start here preoperatively. Here you have a volume of 2.5 liters here. And then you, during follow-up, you can put in your measurements. Every follow-up, you get the excess volume, always measuring both extremities. This is an arm lymphedema. And then automatically the numbers here are in the same Excel sheet calculated. So you can see the, in this particular patient the, uh, how your uh, surgery was successful or not. And also you can have the excess volume reduction. There is also on the home page uh, you can download a follow-up sheet for any kind of lymphatic surgery. You put in the name, birth date, a serial number of surgery, when the a date of cancer operation, and so on. And I just show some of these things that you can put in. Uh, follow up, you can also uh, see the number of uh, incidents of cellulitis, for example. And this automatically uh, goes down into a new uh, pages on the home page, so you can see the incidence, if it's decreasing or increasing you also get uh, all the data that you can just copy and paste into your presentations. It's very versatile. The amount of fat in the aspirate, for example, and how much fat in total and aspirate volume and so on. And then you do the difference of the volume preoperatively, two weeks and so on, up to 10 years, for example. And then you, you for this is an example how the incidence reduction of erysipelas. We have 1,000 observation years before surgery and almost the same after, and we have a 87% reduction of the incidence. And you also you get the amount of excess fat in, in the aspirate, for example, in the tourniquet fat, fat fraction. So this is what it, all, all the figures goes into this uh, uh, schedule here. You can see the follow-up and you can use it in your presentations. And here is the ratio, for example. 
and the f number of patients followed during surgery. Uh, afterwards, we gave the patient penicillin for two weeks, and uh, we uh, used compression continuously. And uh, here is an arm with a garment, and uh, here it should be very uh, snug and fit well. So we we measure these garments to to um, weeks before surgery, and and th there are ten good ways to control uh, edema. <laughs> uh, and it should be like a tattoo. Uh, never being removed. We instruct our patients to remove the garment in the morning, take a shower, lubricate the skin to keep it soft, and put a new clean shrunk garment because when you wash it, it shrinks a little, gives more compression, and then uh, put it on. The used garment is washed to be used the next day. Uh, normally, uh, a 70 year old woman needs two garments every six months, but there are young uh, male patients with metastasis of a melanoma to the axilla that need two garments every month. But normally, they need new garments, three, uh, two garments every three to four months. This is crucial. So, with the controlled compression therapies that the measurements are taking on the healthy arm or leg before surgery two weeks before, and afterwards we gradually take in the garment by the team, or the patient can do that by using the sewing machine at home, if they are good at it. When they feel that the garment is slack, they can, they can take it in a half a centimeter or so, and frequent renewal of garments and frequent checkups. And then when you have complete reduction, you just need to see the patient once a year when you prescribe all the garments for the coming year. You don't need any maintenance therapy or manual lymphatic drainage. So here, for example, at the one month follow-up, you have the postoperative swelling, uh, and you, you, you see how firm the uh, measurements are taken for new garments. And sometimes we use a sewing machine to save some time. And here you can see one patient had put a couple of seams because the garment went slack. So you don't, we don't use any bandaging and no manual lymphatic drainage. There are several papers, about 30 of them, that has shown that manual lymphatic drainage does not uh, have any effect on the excess volume reduction. It has other good effects like releasing oxytocin, but not with, uh, re reducing the excess volume. That is, uh, bandaging is very good. Uh, we don't use any pumps. I show you a typical patient, a male, born 45, secondary lymphedema since 27 years. He's retired, but he's skiing, working a lot on, on the house. And uh, okay, okay. So we, how, how can the compression be increased? We can decrease the circumferences. We take in existing garments. We can use multi-layered. This is a patient. So you can see here. Here we decreased uh, the circumferences with this orange here. And also we put an, another garment on, so he has two garments on the leg, and so on. And here you can see before and after, um, uh, one liter overcorrection. Another patient, female, born 1940, secondary lymphedema since nine years, retired. And uh, here you can see we decrease measurements here, and we also put multi-layer on this lady, and we keep her here on the follow-up with a complete uh, reduction same patient. So can this be reproduced? Yes, uh, it can. So the team in, in Holland uh, looked at this and they have good results as well. This is only one year follow-up. And also uh, another uh, recent with uh, lymphedema of the leg. You can see they have a good uh, reduction here, two years follow-up. And uh, Dr. Shevrin and Manuk in Scotland did this study on legs, and they have a good reduction as well. And we also looked at the quality of life. We have several protocols, but looking on these arms, you don't need any uh, very specific protocol to see that the quality of life in this patient has increased. And, but we published this recently and used SF36, which are, is quite coarse. Uh, a test to check the outcome in the quality of life, but it worked there too. We also published this recently. We have a 87% reduction of the incidence of cellulitis. And um, now, finally, 
estimate outcome of microsurgery. We, we have seen a lot of speakers here. What I am uh, looking for is long-term results and also how much compression is used after microsurgery because if you do both compression and microsurgery, you cannot tell where does the effect come from. So this is a, a good algorithm to check the effect of microvascular surgery. You don't need any fancy equipment, it's very easy. So let's say six weeks before surgery, you remove the garment that the patient has and see what happens. Usually they increase in excess volume. You put the garment again on and you do the surgery. And then let's say three months after surgery, let's remove the garment for a week and see what happens. And if it increases, well, even if you can see with other therapies like uh, other uh, like uh, scintigraphy or ICG that there is something flowing. This is a good test on the clinical situation. But if it doesn't increase, then you have succeeded with your microvascular reconstruction. So inclusion, doc documentation of long-term outcomes is important in order to verify if the surgical or conservative treatment is successful. And you can all download all these charts I've been talking about and some other things from this homepage, www.plasticsurg.nu. Thank you very much for your attention.